Hey, what's good, my people? Okay, all right. So let's talk about this Busta Rhymes album. You know, in the back of my mind, I was like, do I call this album trash? <laughs> or would I call it mediocre? And I decided to settle on mediocre. Um, in the 90s or, you know, even slightly early 2000s, if he had put this out, we would have called it trash, 100%. I don't want to call it trash necessarily because I do think that Buster put his heart into it. I think he did try. Um, and of course, as an artist myself, as a writer, I know it's really hard to make great shit, man. It is extraordinarily hard. So it's not personal when I try to like clown people or something like that. You know, I'm not doing it, you know, because I'm mad or whatever. It's a goofy thing that people think. Um, it's more about the fact that I do think that art speaks for itself and um, if it's great it's great and if it's not it's not and sure you can sometimes put in a lot of effort into something and it still turns out to be trash it is what it is man that's uh, the cruel and unforgiving side of art but that doesn't mean it's not trash so um, I'm gonna say that this was a mediocre project honestly um, I think the results were mediocre now the effort the effort was there um, I do think that Busta did try on some level and um, I think there were some decent things about it that were kind of good. So, you know, let me first, you know, look at the stuff that I thought was decent, okay? I'm gonna look at my notes here. Um, I think the thing I liked, I liked Tibbs' verse, um, Q-Tibbs' verse. I thought his verse was pretty decent, you know? He said some stuff that was kind of, like, entertaining. Um, Rakim's verse was, was okay, um, it was all right. And it was nice. It's like, oh, rock him, you know, and it's not whack. So I do think that the intro with Busta and rock him rhyming on the world is yours. That was pretty decent. You know, that was okay. Again, it wasn't, you know, something that I'm going to play again. But uh, it was kind of a nice surprise. And it does show you how powerful that fucking world is yours beat is, man. And that song. Like, you know, that's what I'm saying, man. Like, People talk about Nas being this top tier lyricist and all that stuff, and that's 100% true. But they forget that Nas came out on some of the most groundbreaking and craziest production that rap has ever heard. You know what I mean? Like, there's a certain soul and serenity to his shit in Nomadic that was just groundbreaking. And so that's why we want Nas to be on groundbreaking, boom bap, interesting production, not just on any production. You know what I mean? Production is a big part of why Nas is who he is. But that's a side note. So I like that. Um, I would say that my favorite song on this album, funny enough, was the one that Flex was playing. And I kind of see now why Flex was playing it. It was called Deep Thoughts. Um, I think that was kind of like the best track overall. If I had to pick one on the album, I think that uh, the beat was it was the best beat on the album. Um, even though I didn't think the beat itself was like that spectacular, but I did think it was like one of the harder beats on the album and Busta was talking some shit in there. Um, it could have been better and you know, funny enough, Busta made the beat. So let me talk about what I didn't like. I did not like the production on this album at all. I thought that while this is an assembly of all of the producers that I love and would have geeked out over in the 2000s and 90s like can you you know can you believe an album with dj scratch and knots and premiere and pete rock and swizz you know what i mean like and even ninth wonder just i mean i would have been like whoa like this would have been a perfect album but unfortunately um i think all these beats were pretty sleepy time for the most part i actually think that busta funny enough made the best beats on this album like the deep thoughts one was to me the best beat overall um the other beat that was also like it could have been decent but it was you know i uh, didn't quite get there was uh you'll never find another me which busta did i think those were some of the strongest beats i mean i i kind of wish that they got tweaked a little better um and really made into some like you know classic shit but um yeah i didn't like the production i, I thought the production was was very um it was very very lethargic and it didn't it just it just didn't work you know i mean there were certain beats on here that were just like retreads of previous beats like um that song you gotta love it which uh it, you know 
in in the one universe it could have worked, but it you know that Bell Biv DeVoe um, retread. I don't know how I feel about that. You know, I do think that was actually one of the highlights of the album. Funny enough, because it's kind of like that old Busta energy and um, the way he spit on it, but it, it, it didn't work. Um, and then the one with <laughs> Mariah, uh, uh, where they did the "I Know What You Want" beat all over again. That was just straight garbage. <laughs> I'm sorry, Busta Man, or whoever. If anyone in this camp hears that, that, that shit was straight garbage. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> why are we even retreading that beat? I don't understand. Like, if we're gonna do a retread, like, <laughs> it's like the weirdest thing to me. Like, dude was just like, you know, let's just redo a song I already did, but like worse. I, I don't know. Like, it, it didn't work. Um, so. That was horrible. The production was just sleepy time. Premiere was disappointing. You know, that was disappointing. Like, uh, you know, I love Premiere. Premiere is my favorite producer ever. And, um, you know, he's on my amount, you know, Rushmore. But I thought that beat was fucking weak as fuck. So I wasn't feeling it. Um, so the production, yeah. I would say that the other thing. Um, that made this album really whack was Buster's voice. Um, but, you know, I've always said this, right? And this goes back to all my videos you can check. I've always said the most important thing in a rap song is the beat. The second most important thing is the, is the voice. It's what the, the vocals, what the, the rapper brings to the table, the energy in the vocals, the way that that voice sounds, right? Those two things are crucial to making a song dope. Lyrics... Mm, the lyrics can be nonsense. They can be dope. Of course, if they're dope, it takes it to even another echelon. But at the end of the day, the two most important things in a rap record are the beat and the voice, right? The the, the presence, the, the the way that voice sounds and feels and how it melds into the track, right? That The spirit of the voice. And so when you look at an, an artist and you can see why and how they fell off, the two most common reasons and very obvious reasons why people fall off in rap is their production falls off. And they might not talk about this, but that's the reality of it, is that their production has fallen off and then their voice has fallen off. And I can give you concrete examples of either, okay? When you look at KRS-One, when people stop paying attention to KRS-One, his production started to fall the fuck off, okay? I mean, Criminal Minded and that shit was hard, okay? People love Criminal Minded. The production on Criminal Minded was insane, especially for its time. Right, but as his albums progressed, his production got shittier, and then there was a little bit of a bright spot when Premiere came into the picture with KRS One, and so people went, Oh my god, MCs act like they don't know you're out of here, black cop, showbiz, and Premiere, you know, Premiere came in and gave new life to KRS One because he got better beats all of a sudden, and his voice was still intact, so he was able to rap and make some hot shit. Production is so fucking key. So when the beat is trash, you know the album's already trash. I don't even have to tell you. But then, the second thing, like I said, is the voice. A perfect example of that is Prodigy. I love Prodigy. Like I said, Prodigy is one of my favorite rappers ever. Okay? Prodigy's voice, the way he sounds on records, the energy, it started to do that, like, it started to go very, very slow and lethargic. And I don't know what it was because he was going through some shit. But we all know... That P in his prime was an animal. He was insane. He was amazing on the fucking record. But as his voice got weaker, his music got shittier. Okay? So, Busta's voice has an issue that I don't quite understand. And I think that that's, unfortunately, what happened to him. You know? Um, I wish he'd talk about it a little bit more. But as something with his voice, he sounded like the Cookie Monster in certain tracks. So, overall, I wasn't feeling that. Um... What are your thoughts? Do you guys think it was anything decent, worth hearing? Let me know. I didn't care for it. You know, it is what it is, man. But he tried. Have a good one.